Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Tyler. Welcome back to another Node.js tutorial video. In today's tutorial, we're going to be building a os.walk function, which will recursively walk a directory and return a list of all the files and folders inside of it. Here I am inside of a empty directory and I'm going to create a index.js file and open it with VS Code. So let's create a function and I'm going to call it walk and it's going to take in one parameter and that is the directory. Now what we want our function to do is store a list of all the files inside of a directory. So I'm going to do const files, uh, we'll call it folder instead, and this is going to be an empty array by default. Then, at the very end of the function, we're going to return the folder array. And that's basically how we want our function to work. Now, what we actually want to do is define a few imports so we can get a list of all the files in a given directory. Const files is equal to read dir sync. Now, this is a default Node.js function that comes with Node.js. What we have to do though, is we have to do const read dir sync is equal to require fs. And just like that, we will now be able to get access to this function, which you can see takes in a path and returns an array or an iterable of all the paths in there. So the path we're gonna pass in is this directory. And by doing so, we now have a list of files, which you can see is a string array. So just to test this, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna console.log files, just like so. Now, I'm gonna come down here and do const files is equal to walk, and I'm just gonna pass in a drive to test this out. So I'm gonna pass in our current directory. So by passing in the current directory name, and then coming up here and using the run code extension, we can run this out and see if this works. And what you'll see is inside of our files array, we get one object with an index.js. Now, let me also create a folder called test. And inside of here, I'm gonna put a test.txt file as well. And when we rerun this, what you'll see is we get index.js and test. So now what we wanna do is loop through all of the files and folders inside of this files array. And we want to determine which one is a folder and which one is a file. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing we're going to want to do is do files.foreach. And here we're going to have the file. And I'm going to change this to file name because what we'll get is the actual file name. So if I console.log file name, what you'll see is we get index.js and test, perfect. So what we actually want though is the full path to the file. So we're gonna do const path is equal to, and I'm gonna use a templating string, and by passing in the dir, and then we're gonna use um, a new thing called separator, which comes by default inside a path, so sep, is built into the path module and what it is is it gives us either the backslash or the forward slash depending on what operating system we're on so i'm going to do dir separator and then we're going to pass in the file name file name so if i also console.log path now what you'll see is it gives us our actual full path to the file so index.js goes to file uh, node.js tutorials walk index.js like so. So now what we want to do is determine if this path is a folder or a file. Because if it's a folder, we need to recursively walk that folder as well. So let's check that. And to do that, we're going to use a method called ls.stat.sync. So ls.stat.sync. We're using the synchronous version for simplicity's sake, but an actual production function, you would not want to use a synchronous version for this. So we're going to do if ls stat sync, and this is going to take in our path. So we're going to pass in the path, and then dot is directory. If this is a directory, we are going to run this block of code, 
else, we're going to run this block of code, right? And I'm actually just going to invert this so this is a clean one-liner. There we go. So here is what we're going to do. If this is not a directory, so if the path is a file, not a directory, then we're going to go down this branch. And what we're going to want to do is simply do folder dot push and then half. It really is that simple because remember our whole goal with this walk function is to take in a directory and return a list of all the files inside of a path. Now just to d demonstrate that this works I'm going to console dot log files right here and you'll see it'll return index.js. So if I save this and run it what you'll see is we get an array with our index.js file because it realizes that this is not a directory. On the other hand, if I invert this, what we should see now is our test directory getting put in here because now we're checking for a directory and we're not inverting it. So now that we know that this works and it can differentiate between a directory and a file, Let's now handle the else case so we can get the files and directories inside of this folder. So I'm going to invert this one more time. So we're now we're checking for the files. So this is a file. What we want to do is run this else block if we get a directory. And this is also very simple. Basically what we're going to have is our dir files is equal to walk of path. Because remember, our path for example, in this case, is test. So what we would do is here we have um, our path, and we're putting in this directory, and now we're repeating the whole entire process, which means now we're looping over this directory instead of the global one. So by simply doing that, and then doing folder push dir files but we also have to do dot 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 to concatenate this array onto this one. And just like that, we actually now are completely done with our walk function. If we run this now and we see, we can come in here and we get this. Inside of our directory, we have our index.js. And then we're going to go and get our test directory and get our test.js. For example, if we do test.py, um, right? So I create another file in here and I create a new folder called new. And then in here, I create a main.js file. Now we have a more complex structure, but it'll still operate the same way. Uh, let me run this. All right, there we go. And here you can see we get our index.js file, our main.js file, three directories deep, as well as our Python and our TXT file. Now, there's a few things we can do to tidy up this function and also add some extra functionality. For example, currently this will throw an error if we try to read a file we don't have access to. For example, instead of passing in the current directory, if I pass in C backslash, which I know is the C drive on my Windows machine, and I run this, it's going to throw an error. And as you see right here, internal throw error, operation not permitted, ls stat. The reason that's happening is because this program does not have permission to access that directory. So if I decide to still want to be able to access this, but just skip the files I can't access instead of throwing an error, we can still do that. To do that, we're going to add a try catch block. So try and then catch. And just by wrapping all of this code inside of the try catch block, we can actually just avoid any files that don't we don't have permission to access. Now, there's two other things we can do to make this function a little bit cleaner. Last thing, what we can do is make this into a one-liner. For example, instead of doing else and then having two lines here, we can make this a one-liner by doing folder.push walk of our path and then doing dot 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 to concatenate these in here. And if we run this now, we won't get an error with C. This will take a really long time, but I'll just show you. See how it says it's running. We're not getting any errors. 
I am going to kill that because that takes a very long time to run. But if I do it on my F drive, for example, you can see I get a whole bunch of files. But one thing you may notice is we're not getting any directories. Sadly, the way we have it set up here is we're never getting the directories included in this array. Now, if you want this as a quick homework assignment, um, I suggest you pause the video and I'll resume in a couple seconds and you can try this on your own. If not, in five seconds, I'm gonna resume this and I'll show you how we can also include the directory with just an extra couple characters. Okay, so by simply adding a comma into the push function, because this is a iterable that we pass in, I can simply pass in the path. Now, this simple one line will now also include directories. To demonstrate this, I'll do the directory name right here, and you can see we get test right here and new right here. But before, without this line of code, we would not get those directories. For example, there's four elements here and there is six elements right here. If you found this video useful, please consider maybe like, commenting, and subscribing and sharing it with any of your friends. Furthermore, if you would like to join our community Discord server, the link is in the description as always, and I hope to see you there.